Welcome to SVG TV News from Monday, December 11th, 2017. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Sunday, December 10th was observed globally as Human Rights Day. It also marked the end of the United Nations 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, which ran from November 25th to December 10th, under the theme, Leave No One Behind, End Violence Against Women and Girls. The Gender Affairs Division held a candlelight march and rally in the Bible community on Sunday evening to bring to an end the 16 days campaign here in SVG. Nikita Tony tells us more about last evening's event in this report. Celebrated from November 25th, International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, to December 10th, Human Rights Day, the 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence campaign is an initiative to galvanize actions to end violence against women and girls around the world. Here in SVG, the series of activities held to commemorate the campaign by the Gender Affairs Division in the Ministry of National Mobilization culminated on Sunday evening with a candlelight march and rally in the Bayou community. Voting that to put an end to domestic violence is a community problem, which requires a community solution, coordinator of the Gender Affairs Division, Polly Oliver, commended all who came out to give support to the cause, which she said signals their commitment to tackling domestic violence in their community and the wider Vincentian society. We are here to talk with you. We are here to talk with our women about how violence against women and women and the fear of violence against women affects their daily lives. How, how they, they want to be supported if it has happened to them. We are here to talk about what they think men can do to prevent sexual violence, physical violence, psychological violence. And we are saying, if you're willing to listen, you can learn a lot from what will be said here this evening. Oliver also emphasized the ministry's commitment to work along with the men in society to further tackle the issue of domestic violence. We are here to talk with our men also about how it feels to be seen as a potential abuser, about whether you know someone who has been abused, about whether you've witnessed domestic violence. We are saying that you can learn about how relationship abuse touches the lives of men and women and we can, what we can do to stop it. Director of the National Commission on Crime Prevention, NCCP, Nicola Evans, outlined the Commission's collective approach in addressing the issue of domestic violence here in SVG. She further commended the Gender Affairs Division and all other involved stakeholders for their efforts in raising awareness on domestic violence. It's an excellent strategy that commits all of the key agencies to action and sets out a vision where victims receive an immediate and proactive response as well as ongoing support. Pleased with the efforts put forward by the Gender Affairs Division in rolling out the 16 days of activism, Minister with Responsibility for Gender Affairs, Frederick Stevenson, deemed domestic violence as a serious human rights issue and called on all Vincentians to come together to combat domestic violence. It is important that all of us, you and I, working together to end uh, domestic violence here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's time for the men in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who are bent on creating incidents of violence against the women and girls in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to say, I think it is time for me to stop. We will continue these activities throughout the length and breadth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to highlight the issues in relation to domestic violence and violence against all our peoples. The event featured various cultural performances along with presentations from the Legal Affairs Department, the Religious Arm and other community representatives. There were also testimonies from persons affected by instances of domestic abuse. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. The rally also saw two individuals sharing their testimonies on how they were affected by and have survived instances of domestic violence. In her remarks, survivor Sarah Badnock noted that she has experienced a number of domestic violence-related situations, including to one of her children. She further encouraged single mothers to do all in their power to protect their children. 
terrible experience to go through is, is something I do not wish, not even on my worst enemy. Because it does not only affect the victim, it affects every member of the family. I can tell you that. And as mothers, it's, it's something that is prevalent in our society and a lot of pressure is being put on single mothers in particular to drop some of these cases to say we're going to hide the shame from the children we won't we don't want people talking about our children and this kind of thing but i am here to say that i stood up as a single mother because the child of my father is dead so i am both mother and father don't make any father stepfather brother uncle nobody abuse your child and you keep silent child is worth more than anything else the fact is Jesus died for us, which make your child very precious. And nothing anybody could offer you in this world today can satisfy that. Badnak, a mother of seven, called for the age of consent to be raised. Put pressure on these fellas. The, the, what satisfaction can you get from somebody who is under the age of 18? And another thing again, the age of consent for me needs to be raised. A 15-year-old cannot walk, a 15-year-old can't have an ID, a 15-year-old is still dependent upon somebody else, and therefore a 15-year-old cannot give consent to have sex. Given a testimony on behalf of her sister, the late Monica Clark, who died as a result of a domestic abuse incident in the Bible area recently, Aisha Richardson called on persons to speak out against instances of domestic violence. Two weeks before my sister's death, she relayed that her supposedly boyfriend who allegedly committed the act was the best man that she ever had. Where my sister is, she's six feet below the ground. Who will it be next? We don't know. We can't say it can't happen to us. We can't say it can't happen to any family members. Because domestic abuse sometimes can be unpredictable. Female prisoner Julene Williams built a strong case for a partnership between the business community and the prison authorities here to capture the 2017 Prisons Public Speaking Competition today as part of activities for Prison Service Week. Seven inmates took part in the competition and highlighted issues relating to the participation of the business sector as well as a need for convicts who have served their time to be accepted back into society. In his opening remarks, Superintendent of Prisons Britton Charles said that the topics were serious ones which have an impact on the inmates' ability to become productive members of society. Our communities, our businesses, um, the different sectors must be involved because if someone come to prison and if someone is stigmatized, if someone can gain employment, then you got to tell me what you would do with the prison system. Because surely, if people can't work to earn, they got to live, and they're going to live by some means, um, somebody say by what, whichever means necessary. Huh? Not to promote crime, but we, 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 we have to decide exactly where we want to take this program, how we view our people, how we view our people after incarceration, and what we do to accommodate them on their return. Superintendent Charles commended the participating inmates for their presentations and expressed hope that their words will have a positive impact on how those who have served their time behind bars are treated when reintegrated into the society. All right, and I declare right now, right here, that all of you will okay. But I'm, I'm really happy with the level of research and the quality of your presentations. And I could say 
without any question, you, you, you reflect in my views, you reflect in the prison's views, and I'm certain that our society would hear you, and I'm certain also that they would listen and take the appropriate actions um, in regards to the two questions that were asked. The prison superintendent took the opportunity to quote a biblical scripture to encourage those who have committed wrongs to accept responsibility for their actions so that society can accept their return more easily. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, he said, If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We, we have to understand just like all of us here, we have emotions, we have feelings. We get hurt too. Yeah? And society would feel it's hurt as well. But we have to accept our responsibility and say sorry and demonstrate, demonstrate that contriteness so that that second chance could be more easily here now is a highlight of the top three presentations in the prison's public speaking competition. If convicts can be given the necessary support, they can be good parents to their children, excellent artisans and small business owners. The rehabilitative process in the prison must be designed to assist convicts in genuine ways. They must be exposed to education, learning new skills and trades so that they can be self-sufficient when they leave prison. This is important. It reduces recidivism and the financial burden placed on the government to effectively care for the needs of all prisoners. The psychology of self-fulfilling prophecy must never be allowed to dominate the efforts. Who are we as society to judge? Before such is done, we are to ask how when, where, and why. Yet, one must be willing to get rid of many things and maintain a positive outlook on life. Your opinion of yourself always becomes your reality. If you have doubt that no one will believe in you, then that becomes your reality. So think big, dream big. Prison isn't the end. It's the beginning of the abilities you are yet to realize. Society should give ex-convict a second chance. I thank you. If the situation was the other way around, what would you, society, do? If your mother, or your brother, or your sister, or your father was the offender, would a second chance be in order for that individual? Me? I believe that a second chance should be given to the offender who wants it and by, it should be given by the society who is willing and able and even knows how to give a second chance. Thank you very much. 29 medical students received their white coats on Saturday, December 9th at the All Saints University College of Medicine, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, 16th White Court Ceremony held at the Arnisville campus. According to Dr. Terence Marcel, who is speaking on behalf of the Dean, the ceremony is symbolic of the cleanliness necessary to practice medicine. Dr. Marcel also reminded the students to keep a human touch in carrying out their duties, as compassion is a necessary trait in being a good doctor. While in today's practice of medicines, it is characterized by the use of high technology, innovative surgical procedures, powerful therapeutics, that what you will learn is that the most important and fundamental tools that you will have for healing and reducing the suffering of your patients would be one, your eyes, your ears, your hands, an open heart, compassion, empathy, what I'd like you to remember is to keep human concerns 
at the center of the practice of medicine. Also reiterating the need for empathy and for the graduates to ensure that they conduct their profession with best practices was faculty representative Dr. Wasim Al Hafid. And treat each patient as an individual. And as individuals, they don't all fit these criteria as perfectly as the guidelines require. This art deals with our human faculties, our ability to see things, to listen to things, and to feel things. It also deals with the emotional side of medicine, our ability to be empathetic, or to sense that there is something wrong and then to be able to do something about it. It's an extension of compassion. But unlike what you have learned so far, this art cannot be taught in a classroom. It can only be learned by seeing patients one by one, day after day, and year after year. Encouraging his fellow colleagues to never give up in the pursuit of their goals was class representative John O'Kee. Personally, sometimes when I feel discouraged and overwhelmed with the schoolwork, I just remember my siblings back home, they are looking up to me and I can't stand point them. I also remember my families and my friends and everything they've done for me just and the sacrifice they made just for me to be here. And I just immediately get back on my feet and continue. I'm very sure that it was very challenging for most of us here, but we can't give up now. Good things don't come easy. Making it this far is very challenging and brain tasking. Failure should never be a discouragement, but a stepping stone. What defines us is how well we rise after falling. And I've learned that you only fail when you fail to rise up back again. All operations at the Dominica campus of the All Saints University Campus College of Medicine were transferred to St. Vincent at the end of September 2017 as a consequence of the devastation caused by Hurricane Maria. Approximately 400 students continued their medical education here. The fourth sitting of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS Assembly, held on Saturday in Antigua, highlighted the importance of doing the right thing despite the pressures of imperialism. Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonzalez, who was in attendance, said he is pleased to have lived to see the day whereby Caribbean leaders did right by Cuba and being more inclusive. He claimed that the Caribbean also paved the way to strengthen relations between the United States of America and the Spanish-speaking nation. Dr. Gonzalez, however, expressed disappointment that the current U.S. administration was breaking down these relations. That we paved the way for the American President Barack Obama on the 17th of December 2014 to agree with President Raul Castro to announce the process of normalizing relations between Cuba and the USA. We set the pace. We set the way. Sadly, the current U.S. administration is seeking to undo even the baby steps taken by Obama in this regard. One thing is clear, my dear friend and comrade Raul. We in CARICOM and the OECS will not permit the presidential politics in South Florida and the geopolitical interests of the wholly irrational wing of modern imperialism to stop us or derail us from consolidating and strengthening our relations with Cuba. Invited as a special dignitary at the sitting was President of the Republic of Cuba, Raul Castro, who pointed out that besides imperialism, the Caribbean had to combat the challenge of climate change. You decided not to call off this meeting. This we take as a confirmation of the fraternal relations that bind us together. Presently, we must face up to a new and pressing challenge on whose resolution rests the survival of the human species. 
I mean, coping with climate change is a priority that humanity cannot postpone. <coughs> but especially our peoples, which have suffered directly its shattering effects and must confront the most worrisome predictions due to our geographic location and the high vulnerability to such extreme natural disasters as hurricanes. Commemorating International Anti-Corruption Day on Saturday, December 9th, the opposition New Democratic Party, the NDP, has vowed to pursue the election petitions to the very end. In an address to commemorate the day observed by the United Nations and the date of the last general elections on December 9th, 2015, Dr. Friday made a call for greater accountability. He said that his party has zero tolerance when it comes to corruption and the continuation of the hearings into the election petitions tomorrow, December 12th, at the High Court in Kingstown is a demonstration of his party's position on the matter. These matters are now being addressed in the court. On the 12th of December, the matter will be heard in the court here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Over the past several months, we have also been calling for greater accountability or accountability on the part of government in the affairs, the financial affairs of the country. The reason why we insist on it is because the law requires it, but also it helps to prevent corruption. It helps to promote transparency and helps to prevent wastage in the use of government resources. We continue to call on the government to adhere to the well-established principles that are clear in our law and our practice as to how to govern the country and how to manage the financial affairs of the country in such a way that we avoid corruption, that we avoid having wastage. After the December 9th general elections in 2015, the opposition NDP filed petitions against the ruling Unity Labour Party, the ULP, citing irregularities in voting procedures in the North Windward and Central Leeward constituencies. SVG Broadcasting Corporation, parent company of SVG TV, continues to bring Christmas chair to the students of the Dorsetshire Hill Primary School. SVG BC senior accountant Agnes Gibson handed over a check for the school to host its annual Christmas party, which the company has been sponsoring over the years, along with other support to the institution. Gibson said SVG BC is pleased to bring a smile to the faces of the students by giving back during this season of sharing. On behalf of SVG Broadcasting Corporation, today we hand over a check to the Dorset Hill Government School for their annual party. It's a Christmas thing and they always do it every year. So today we hand it over to give them a bit of joy. Student Jolene Bradshaw expressed gratitude to SVG Broadcasting on behalf of the student body of the Dorset Hill Primary School and took the opportunity to wish all the best for the Christmas season. On behalf of the Dorset Hill Government School, I want to thank the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Broadcasting Corporation for their continuous support for our annual Christmas party and we have fun. Merry Christmas, St. Vincent and the Grenadines!